Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we'll discuss the 10 things in my own wardrobe on which I regularly receive the most compliments and the lessons I've learned as a result. <laughs> viewers of the channel may recall that Raphael has previously published a video on his own most complimented items. Now that I'm increasingly more settled into my role here at the Gentleman's Gazette, we thought it might be fun for me to compile my own list. It's always nice to receive a compliment, of course, and if you're wondering how best to accept one, you can find our video on that subject here. But for today's video in listing my 10 things, some of which are individual items and others of which are collections, I'll also be offering some reasons as to why I think those items have gotten so much praise. We'll start today with my collection of vintage hats. As has been noted here on the channel and also on our website, I'm almost never out of doors without a hat on, and I've built up a collection of hats over the last 10 years or so. My regular three-season rotation consists principally of three vintage fedoras, one in a sort of mustardy brown color, one in charcoal gray, and one in medium gray. I've also got a vintage black fedora, but I don't wear it as often. By the way, you can find our video on why black is the most overrated color in menswear here. In the summer, I most often wear a coconut straw pork pie, and I wear a boater for more formal occasions. I used to own a conventional Panama hat, but it got too worn out to wear. Still, I hope to acquire another one soon. Using online resources, I've learned how to re-block the crowns of my felt hats all by myself at home. Perhaps this could be a future topic for a video if you viewers show interest. And for our full playlist on different hat styles, etiquette, and more, you can go here. Next up is my collection of cufflinks. When I started seriously investing in dress shirts in my college years, I became immediately fascinated by French cuffs and cufflinks as they're a subtle but distinct way to accent an outfit. My current collection incorporates everything from simple black links that are typically worn under sweater sleeves, to more casual fabric inlays, to designs incorporating colors and patterns, to vintage models that I've found online and in secondhand stores. And of course, I would be remiss not to mention our various Fort Belvedere models in both Monkey's Fist and Eagle Claw designs, which you can find here. And if you'd like to learn more about French cuffs in general, we've also got a video on that topic. Speaking of my French cuffed shirts, they're my number three pick, as several of them have also gotten many compliments, including my blue and white gingham model and several of my other grid pattern shirts, as well as my pastel colors, in particular pink, probably because it's good for my complexion. My lavender puppy tooth and violet glencheck models almost fit in both of these camps, since the patterns are so small that they read as solids from a distance. And my blue and yellow Prince of Wales check model, my first shirt from Charles Tirrett, is a favorite of mine. I've been collecting these shirts for the better part of five years now, all of them in the same fit. But since joining the Gentleman's Gazette, I do now realize that they are largely too big on me. So stay tuned for future content as I continue on my style journey, zeroing in on the fits of all of my garments. On that note, I'll touch on two of my odd jackets next, both of which fit me reasonably well, or at least better than some of the other jackets in my closet. These would be my double-breasted navy blazer and my camel hair sport coat, both of which are vintage. In addition to liking the fit of these jackets, I also appreciate the smaller details, like the blazer's gold buttons and the sport coat's wide, rounded lapels. And if you're curious about the differences between blazers, sport coats, and suit jackets, we cover everything you need to know in this video. Mentioning camel hair also reminds me that I do receive a number of compliments on my camel hair overcoat, which is probably my favorite piece of winter outerwear. This is another vintage piece, and one that pairs well with my brown fedora, as well as with many different colors of gloves and scarves. By the way, we do also have a video on pairing gloves and scarves with overcoats, which you can find here. 
The color stands out well from the more typical black, navy, and charcoal overcoats you are going to see, and the genuine camel hair does keep me quite warm in the winter. My overcoat collection isn't nearly as extensive as Raphael's, though, and this video should prove that. I don't happen to have too many full suits in my wardrobe at the moment, but two that do get compliments and are therefore my number six pick are my royal blue suit and my charcoal gray suit. The blue is two pieces and the charcoal is three. Again, while neither of these suits have a perfect fit, I do like the way that each of them makes me feel. Also, the charcoal suit has a slight texture and pattern to its weave, and the blue suit is brighter than a traditional navy, so it stands out a bit. I appreciate having the option to wear the charcoal suit as either two pieces or three, and with either of these I do sometimes also engage in the spezzato technique of breaking them up and pairing them with odd trousers, as I'm doing here today with the blue jacket. And as long as we're on the topic of choosing layers to wear underneath jackets, or indeed on their own, I'll mention my sweater collection next. You've seen a number of my sweaters on the channel already, including my cardigans in navy, blue, gray, and black, and my quarter zip in an oatmeal color that's good for more casual outfits. My favorites, though, and the ones that get the most compliments, are my wine-colored cardigan and my berry-colored cashmere v-neck. Both of these sweaters can be worn well under jackets, as you are seeing here, or of course on their own. Cardigans tend to give the wearer a more professorial vibe, which I don't necessarily mind, whereas v-necks are more sporty and preppy. Both styles, though, are quite versatile. Let's return to accessories for a moment to cover another small piece that can make a big difference, collar clips. These are designed to make the knot of one's tie more pronounced and also to hold the collar together in a neat and tidy way. They were particularly popular in the early 20th century, but they fell out of favor somewhat as larger tie knots and wider spread collars came into fashion. I have a few vintage models in my collection, some of which are more ornate than others. They don't always get noticed because they are small, but when they do, onlookers are generally very complimentary. Of course, Fort Belvedere does offer collar clips in yellow gold, rose gold, and silver, and you can experiment with those in your own outfits as well. My number nine pick is another accessory, boutonnieres. As with collar clips, they were a popular accessory in the early 20th century, but they too fell out of favor somewhat. Probably because real flowers could wilt or might get pollen on a lapel, and having to often buy fresh flowers wasn't exactly cheap. Fort Belvedere has solved this problem too, though, with our extensive collection of silk boutonnieres. My Edelweiss and corn flowers in different colors are good for sport coats, and my carnations are good for black tie ensembles. Which brings us nicely into my final selection for today, my black tie wardrobe. As a jazz singer who specializes in early 20th century standards, I often wear black tie when performing, and as a result, I have a few different ensembles in my collection. You've seen both my black single-breasted and midnight blue double-breasted tuxedos on the channel, as well as my double-breasted ivory shawl collar dinner jacket. I've got a single-breasted ivory model as well, also with a shawl collar. Some of these ensembles are vintage and others are new, and the same can be said for my black bow ties as well. You can find a wide variety of black tie as well as white tie accessories in the Fort Belvedere shop, and for anything you'd like to know about these formal dress codes, our comprehensive black tie guide on the website has you covered. To wrap up today, let's consider a number 11 bonus pick that echoes Raphael's own list. This would be my overall look or demeanor when wearing any of these items, as well as other pieces in my collection. No matter whether you're a menswear expert or just starting on your own style journey, wearing your clothes with confidence is a key step in wearing them well. Of course, fit is important, as we've covered many times here, and you should always try to look for quality craftsmanship. But equally key is being able to wear your garments in a way that feels comfortable and natural to you. 
If you can do this, you should be no stranger to getting compliments from those around you. In today's video, I'm wearing a sporty combination that does feature at least a few of the items I've discussed here today. Chief among them would be the jacket from my royal blue suit, which, as I said, I'm wearing in a broken-up spezzato style, with some gray odd trousers that feature a small pattern in their weave. Harmonizing with both the jacket and the trousers is my shirt, which features a microcheck in dark gray and blue. It isn't one of my French cuffed models from Charles Tirrett, but it provides a bit of variety in my closet, as I don't have too many barrel cuffed shirts. To add some brighter pops of color to the outfit today, I've chosen a matter silk tie with a geometric micro pattern in a lavender color that harmonizes well with the light purple cornflower boutonniere from Fort Belvedere. The blue cornflower is the most standard and classic choice, but we've introduced a number of other cornflower colors in the shop, so you should take a look. My socks are from Fort Belvedere too. They're gray with light blue shadow stripes. These go well with the trousers, as well as with my shoes, which are gray suede darbies from Heinrich Dinkelocker. The other piece in the outfit today is a vintage magenta-colored pocket square from Hermes, which features a sort of chain-link design in yellow and bluish tones. 